Hi. Hi. <laughs> We're the weirdest reviewing books. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're reviewing Dune by Frank Herbert. Mm -hmm. I read it in Russian and the translation is very good. And I read it in English. I've read this book many times and uh, uh, the following books. You yeah, I've, I've only read uh, the first book. I haven't read the, uh, other, uh, the other books from the series. Uh, anyway, uh, I usually don't like sci-fi, but uh, I like this book very much. Because you're weak. No, because uh, I don't like sci-fi because I don't like space. I don't like uh, when everything's like neon and blue and uh, uh, a lot of technology. Uh, and uh, you don't like the aesthetic. I, I don't like laser guns. No, you don't. Yeah. but no, they, you don't like the aesthetics. Yeah. I don't like the aesthetics. And that that's and different in this book. Completely different. Right. Yes. It's not a traditional sci-fi book. Mm -hmm. That's why I love it so much because it has, like, a lot. I love hairy people. <laughs> you can't say hairy people. <laughs> okay, I love. It has a middle. Middle. middle it has a Middle Eastern aesthetic. Yes. Uh, and it's set on a desert planet of Arrakis, with these uh, billowing sand dunes, and uh, the uh, ecology is worked uh, out. I just love it, and I love that uh, they have wood and, uh, uh, like, when they. Um, you remember when they're on on the planet on Arrakis, and they have this feast. Um, and like uh, they have a tradition of uh, throwing wet towels on the floor, and like uh, then they take the towels on the street and uh, ah, keep the yes. water. To so they get, they people. have he's built a Frank Herbert's built an entire culture yes. here and an aesthetic. So there, it's di in the far future, but it's a future without lasers and such. They have wooden it's tables like an and oil view paintings. Of what what yeah. is possible? Right. Yes. They have oil paintings. They have um, what else? They have wooden furniture. And most importantly, uh, machines that think have been banned in the future mm -hmm. because the sometime in the future people fought a war and humans have developed their brains to some uh, uh, re um, remarkable levels. Yes, with spice. <laughs> the spice is this drug that there's a monopoly on this planet um, and that's part of how the events in the book take place. Yes, the, uh, it's all... Uh... It, it's going around the spice. Uh, the uh, the plot is built around spice melange. Melange. I melange say is uh, melange is the <laughs> spice that makes you see into the future. And the people who fly spaceships, they use it to fly without crashing into planets. I'm assuming, um, so they can see in the future and they can fly without running into things. It also they makes your eyes speed. blue. Yes. Which is just and awesome. the people stuck on the planet. There's a family. Blah blah blah. We won't give too many spoilers. But the hero Paul Atreides, he consumes the spice and is develops this amazing ability mm -hmm. to see the future. Ah, right. Uh, I wanted to say about uh, Ben and Jesuit and Jessica, because. Uh, well, you got to tell them who the Ben and Jesuit are. Ben and Jesuit, uh, who who are they? Well, there are two it's classes. Like there are two classes society? of people who have learned to use their minds. Uh, as well as a machine, and one are the Mentats, and the other are the Bene Gesserit, who are all women, so they're mm -hmm. like, they call them witches, and yeah. they have like these mental powers. Um, it's of, kind of like a secret society or a cult, you don't quite know or what they are, but you know that they're like, uh, they have, uh, they're like priesthood, they yeah. have, uh, uh, they're very powerful, they advise the emperor, um, and they're very awesome and cool. Yeah, they're very cool fighters. And yeah, and the, they have the they're voice. Witchy. They're witchy. Uh -huh. They're very witchy. So you know, and the, and then the mentats are like computers, mm -hmm. but humans. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, what I like about Jessica is uh, that she's um, she has this training. She was raised uh, uh, raised as a Jessica dinner. is the hero's mother, Paul yes. Atreides' mother. Yeah, <laughs> she You forgot that. Part. Yes, I do. <laughs> But uh, what was I saying? Ah, she was raised uh, as a Bene Gesserit, and uh, ah, Bene Gesserit, they they're trying to breed a, a genius, a prophet, uh, like a, a prophet. A, a it's like a yes, and uh, so they breed. They were trying to breed a female prophet, in the book, mm -hmm. but they end up with Paul. But they have all these plots uh, of uh, how. Um, you will have to cross this line with this line, and then the son will marry. They're planning daughter. everyone's marriages, yeah. like they're like your mother. <laughs> uh, 
They're like, Pauline's mother, just not as bitchy. And they plan all the... No, hey! You can't, you can't say that. But they're planning all of these bloodlines to get this perfect creature that's like a, a Jesus or Muhammad, except in space in the future. Yes, and Jessica, she disobeys. She uh, was supposed to give birth to a girl, but she did. Uh, but instead she had a boy. And um, I like that she's uh, like she realizes she makes uh, she made a mistake uh, and uh, did she make a mistake? Well, not a mistake, but uh, are you giving away spoilers, woman? Yeah, but uh, they're gonna they're gonna read it. No, I, people don't read it. This is, we're doing it for Americans. They don't read Polina. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? Ah, she disobeyed the order, but she's like. She's kind of defiant. She's uh, she obeys the the Bene Gesserit, but uh, you can see that she's really strong. <laughs> the Is she a strong, strong Russian woman? <laughs> she's so, not Russian. I know that she's in space, but you know what I mean. <laughs> but um, she's like a very cool character that uh, I don't know how to explain, but um, she's maternal. I mean, she's defense. Yeah. She's defense her child. Um, She's a, she's a very good wife, actually. She's protect. Yes, she's she not is. married. She's the official mistress mm -hmm. of the uh, Paul's father, but he ne the Paul's father never married, so it's his only mate. And she's very good and protective of him as well. Oh God, was so sad. Oh, don't give him spoilers. <laughs> did you leave the cat out? Did you leave yes, Ugly Cat out? He's scratching on the door. I did. Okay. Okay. Fuck her. She can go. We have out. a cat, Ugly Cat, Strashnikov in Russian. <laughs> she doesn't like Dune, because she can't read. Because she's a cat. She's a cat. They don't read very much. They don't no, usually. Just, no, they don't. You got the connect to story. Yes. Anyway. Anyway, I love Jessica. I like Paul very, Paul very much. And, um, mm, like, uh, at, at first he's really young and, uh... He's a boy. He's a boy. And he's weak. He's undersized, weak. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can see that she, he's not just a weakling that suddenly is going to become the greatest hero of uh, all. He's uh, small, but he's well trained. He has this. He has Gurney Halleck. Gurney Halleck. Gurney Halleck. Yeah. I don't know. It's not. It's not like a real name. <laughs> but I read it in Russian, uh, and uh, like uh, he, you, you can see that he's very skilled and talented uh, in many many fields, and like. But he's not mature. So yes. you know, there's great room for the character to develop. Yes, yes. Right. Th can... That's it. Yes. You and can then see by where the end, going. right then, the, by the end, he's like a really believable hero, and it's just like fucking awesome. Yeah, and he's not just a hero; he's a prophet. Yeah. Which is. Um, um, it's just brilliantly written and mm -hmm. just so so inventive. He's you know Frank mm -hmm. Herbert's a real. If he's not a genius, he's a really creative guy. This is not like any other science fiction you read, mm -hmm. right? The, yes. the, the setting, the characters, it's very, very unusual, and that's why even chicks like yourself will read it. <laughs> yes, even chicks. Ah, like, uh, the world building. The world building is just brilliant, because they're on, they're on this planet, uh, there is a desert, mm -hmm. uh, and um, it's very, very dry, very, very hot, and you cannot survive in the desert. Uh, but they have they built these costumes, these decombe suits, still suits they still call them suits. to re reclaim the water. Yes, I, I um, thought that was really awesome, like uh, yeah. uh, that you can survive uh, in the desert because of this uh, suit and uh, mm, how they built uh, their shelters in the desert. I love the I love how they collect the water from uh, tiny little plants and uh, yeah, you know the culture is like he built a culture that. You can believe these people evolved in a yes. desert because every little detail of their culture revolves around the preciousness of water, the sacrality yes. of, of uh, fluid. Oh my God! And the the language, like uh, um, because love... it's reminiscent of like you would think of Bedouins or Arabic or something. Yes, right? there's and something romantic and mysterious about it, and he yeah. sheds water for the dead. I yeah. love it. I said in Russian. I can't remember what he said. But it, it, it's, it's, it's very uh, believable culture. And then also, you know, they quote, they have quotes from, what is it, the Orange Catholic Bible, which mm -hmm. is not a modern Bible. And then they have quotes from something that sounds remotely Islamic. 
Mm -hmm. But it's not so you can imagine far, far in the future, the religion itself has been changed as they mm -hmm. travel through space and time. And really, unbelievable read. Yeah, this is right. uh, um, awesome. And um, I don't know about the, the English book, but uh, in my Russian version, in the end, uh, he gives a glossary. Yeah, there's a glossary for all these strange terms. Um, yes, um, and um, also they describe religion of Dune and uh, um, ecology of Dune. Uh, and I think this is really awesome because uh, it's uh, kind of like an article. Well, you know, I, I lived in a character? place very much like this and studied ecology in the desert, the sand hills of Nebraska, and I was astounded how well a novelist understood desert ecology because it really it's really deep he mm -hmm. goes deep into uh, n that kind of lifestyle mm -hmm. right? um, what else oh, there's a, there are a couple there's a couple movies there's a movie by David Lynch that it really I think it sucks donkey dick although he got the still still suits look real real but you know it just it's, it's not the right kind Isn't of director the cute boy? yeah they're all, yeah, it's a, it, yeah. Like but no, not the new one. We haven't seen a new one. When the new movie yeah, comes out with the great. uber cute boy, mm -hmm. uh, would definitely, uh, would definitely rate that one. Yes. And then there was one on the science fiction channel, and they did. People complained because they didn't have the still suit. Mm -hmm. um, and it was pretty good mini series actually. But, um, I remember it was like a Children of Dune. Well, one scene was shitty, but it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but when and when the new movie comes out, we'll watch it just because the gay boy in there is incredible. He's not gay in the movie. He's full of trades, but... Uh, hey, how do you know? That? Pauline has a fetish for gomosexual ah, boys. Also, so. also, I like this... Uh, his, uh, she's not his wife, but she's... Uh, um, like his his, his, his concubine? No, we can't say that word. What is it? His mistress. Yeah, what his did lover. you say concubine? I don't know, because of the political correctness. <laughs> you people... Russia has none of that, so we can say what we want to. <laughs> but, uh, Chani! We got distracted there. <laughs> okay, we're turning That's off. That's what we're doing around here. Yeah. But we're talking about Chani. Chani. I love Chani because she is like a ranger. <laughs> and uh, uh, she's very cool and she can move uh, silently in the desert. She can move silently. You know that from the book. Yes, you remember when she oh, they all, they all move. Yes, they could all move. They could all move silently in the desert. Huh? <laughs> yes. But anyway... And we got into the discussion, but it got cut off because you screwed up the camera. Mm. That you think they're brown people in the book. Of course you think, think they're, they're not brown. Blue. And it does not say explicitly that the Fremen are brown. I think it said explicitly when he first, uh, when, uh, he first saw Fremen in his castle. It was an old woman who tested Jessica, remember? It, uh, they, I think no, they we said knew, that she we was knew, a small brown woman. But maybe the woman was brown and all the Fremen are not. I don't think you so. you are extrapolating from the world we live in, where brown people live in the desert generically, and to think that in the future in space all the people in the desert are brown. I think if there is a race of people that live in the desert separately from everybody, everybody, and we know that one is brown, that all the rest are brown. Too. That's racism. That's <laughs> that's you're, you're doing racism right there, and the people there are gonna. The, our one viewer is going to fuck you up for doing your races. <laughs> and, and the worms are awesome. Yeah, oh yeah, there's a gigantic, these race of creatures, worms, they're like gods. They're doing like that shit. And sandstorms. I like the moment in the book when uh, Jessica and Paula like, get away from uh, people who follow them. Uh, and they get into the sandstorm on the летательный uh, аппарат. Like the flying machine, like right? Like flying machine. Uh, <laughs> I forget what they call them in English, but they're fly. They're like little helicopters. Yeah. So and they get into the storm, and nobody ever survives in the sandstorm, but they did. Now my brain is going like, what is what were those things called? The flying machines? <laughs> I forget. But they're coll they were collecting the spice and the gigantic worms. I don't remember I how big the worms were. They're oh, huge. They were like a hundred meters. I don't know what that is. That metric shit sucks. But mm -hmm. uh, they're big. And they make the spice out of their bodies. These giant worms. Mm -hmm. And then they collect the spice to see the future. Mm -hmm. And shit. Yeah. And they're terrifying. They're like, they have no eyes, but they have teeth. Because they're giant worms. And they're, yeah. you know, they're scary like that. Mm -hmm. They're gigantic phallic symbols riding the sands. 
That's why you should read this book. That's what we're doing right here. <laughs> read doing. this book for the giant phallic symbols. <laughs> That's what you need to read it for. Yes. And yeah. Shani. And Shani. Ah, and we forgot to say about Harkonnens. The Harkonnens. The Harkonnens are the bad uh, house. Yes, and they're right? disgustingly fat. Fat, fat and, uh, and nasty yeah. and cruel. They're very cruel. Yeah. Right. You and really hate them. And somebody said something about, uh, like, watch YouTube videos that they're pissed because they're g the character the most cruel is gay. Like, you can't have a gay guy be evil. What kind of bullshit is that? Um, hey, you know, I know a lot of evil gay guys. Do you? My dad was an evil gay guy. No, no. Your mom's an evil gay woman. I'll burn my parents. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. So it's like, yeah, it's gay, but so what? You know, it is a great character. He's incredibly evil, and you know, I hope the world has all kind of evil ones, not just straight evil. We need gay, bi, trans. We need evil. diversity. Diversity of evil. Evil. <laughs> evil characters need to be diverse. Yes. At the Canessa Studio. Yes. Yes. Where were we? Is anyway, that it? yeah, that's a one. Go read book. this book. Rent it <laughs> at your local library. Check it out. We don't say rent it. Check out this book. We don't have libraries because nobody reads. <laughs> when the movie comes out, watch the movie. Yes. And we'll watch the movie and we'll review it too. Yes. For our one viewer <laughs> somewhere in weirdo land. Okay. Two weirdos reviewing shit. Goodbye, motherfuckers. Goodbye.